Hello everybody, I'm gonna do a couple of videos or maybe even a long series of videos on some of the preposterous claims made by Andrew Huberman. I know that he's the biggest thing now in health and nutrition. It's becoming, um, um, he's becoming quite a, 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 a social media celebrity. And so I'm gonna focus on two tweets um, that are extremely preposterous and uh, I'm gonna pick them apart. And I must apologize, I just got down from uh, going to the gym doing jujitsu, so I've been rolling around on the mats and my hair looks is, is sticking up And so I'm, I'm not as handsome as my usual self. I'm sorry ladies, but we're gonna have to <laughs> That didn't come off the way I wanted to we're gonna so we're gonna talk about the two tweets so um, The first tweet is really funny. He says given reading on smartphones impairs cognitive function by way of reducing spontaneous size and thereby impairing forebrain function. The solution is to one, do long form reading on larger screens or paper slash books. And get this, two, deliberately sigh, double inhale, exhale every two to four minutes. Well, I, I thought this was an insane tweet. I've never heard of anything like this before. and. I didn't know that if, maybe, but, but, but maybe, maybe. So I actually looked at the paper itself and they found a correlation between um, increased cognitive load, hyperactivation of the prefrontal cortex and sighing. And they didn't actually test whether deliberately sighing would take some of that cognitive load away or reduce some of the hyperactivation of the prefrontal cortex. So they found a correlation but they didn't test whether it was causative. So there's no evidence whatsoever for what he's saying that actually just sitting there and intentionally sighing on your smartphone while you're reading your smartphone is actually gonna be helpful for you. There's no evidence whatsoever. Even in the reference that he provided, he just extrapolated a recommendation from some sort of correlation that he saw because that's a popular thing that he does and that's why people follow him, but it's complete nonsense. There's no reason to think that actually doing that will help at all, no evidence. Let's go to the next tweet. and. You can talk about that. So, um, he wrote, During a health symposium at Stanford Med, I learned from a cardiologist colleague that even if we get our three, three hours of zone two cardio per week, the benefits are largely erased by sitting more than five hours per day. <clears throat> Solution standing and for one to one ratio, one to one ratio is sitting very specific and 10 minute walks per day. There's no evidence for this whatsoever. In fact, some of the studies that he's citing showed that yes, while sitting does reduce some of the benefits of exercising, if you don't exercise in addition to, to sitting, you're in way worse shape. So that's that. 